Today's 5th of February 2016 and we have John Tierney from Amaris. Hello. Thanks John. Okay, do you want to start off maybe just um, what you started with doing when you started working there? Well, no, I, I came back from England. I came back from England. I was told there was work here in the Amaris. I came back, got a job in Amaris. And I think my first morning in Amaris, there was five was called up to the office. Joe Hayes, mm -hmm. Larry Dunn, Tony Madden, who was the other man? Jeff uh, McNamara, James McNamara, and myself. Five of us were about early twenties. And Amara sat us down and said, you know, he says, I want to make top butchers out of the five years, he said. We know you're top butchers as it is, but I'm going to make super butchers out of you, that's what I've seen. We're going to spend the time, he says, in the jobs. And by the time I finish, he says, you'll be able to do every job on the line. Because there was always problems. But somebody's out and replacing them. You didn't have qualified butcher to do it, you know. And uh, so he trained us. Some more than others. It was, uh, I, my first job was killing pigs. That was the first job he sent to me at the top of the line, killing the pigs. So a few days or weeks after I started on the pigs, the fellow that used to do it retired. Mm -hmm. So I was left there. Are no move, I was left there. I was 23 years in the factory. I spent 23 years killing the pigs. Mm. No, you didn't. That wasn't the only job you'd done. The killing would last maybe a whole morning. In the evening, you'd cut the pigs. You might end up striking them all the tanks. You did everything. No one particular job. You had, as I said, I had a job on the killing line, which was killing pigs. If we only killed one pig or a thousand pigs, I'd end up killing them. If we went into the cutting, if we were cutting bacon, I'd end up taking out the breast bone, or sorry, the eye bone, the steak, and uh, trim, trim, trimming around the ham. It was on a, it was on a conveyor belt type system, you know? Mm. Of course, they had to take out the breast bones and so on, down and on. You might end up, when we started first, it was a different setup. But, uh, there's no point of uh, going back that far with it. We used to be doing what they called, we might as well. What they what used to do was side down. You could get a job of siding down. Which meant going into the chill, mm -hmm. taking a side of bacon on your shoulder. Full side, head and everything would be on it. Of that. Ah, well, it wouldn't be a, a double plate, it wouldn't be two sides. Okay. Used as There's okay. two sides to everything, only one side. But heavy enough, bring it out, throw it down on a table. Go over to the other table, pick up the one that's done, bring it in and hang it up. Bring another one out, throw it down, pick up the one you're after, bring it out before that, bring it back in and hang it up. You will never stop, you. Mm. Continuous movement. That could go for two or three hours. You'll be tired. Mm. But uh, you get used to it. That was the old system. Then they brought in this conveyor belt, which was a great idea. Okay. But, uh, when did they bring that in, John? When did it be? It'd be around the 1970s, I'd say. Okay. The early 70s. They brought in a new killing system, and the, the old killing system. There was a chap there, he chained the, the pig onto the bar, uh, come up on a heist onto the bar, onto the continuous bar. When he came up on the bar, you stuck him, pushed him around the corner. He was held at a ledge. There'd be 20 pigs held there before they start dropping them into a scalding tank. Yeah. And uh, they go through the scalding tank, come out of that, into a furnace, come out of that. There'd be somebody there, they'd go through a machine that would scrape the, the, the hair yeah. and whatever burn flesh was on them off them. They'd go on and there'd be three or four fellas there, then they'd finish, they'd touch up the parts of the machine and this. Then they were opened, the insides taken out, dropped out, thrown up on the benches for the vets. Came down along the line, different mm -hmm. jobs down along, they'd come off the end of the line just the side of bacon, with the head split in two, pushed into the chill until the following day, and you the cutting. You had to chill them overnight before you cut them. And why was that, John? They were too soft. Okay. After, after killing them, they'd be very soft, hot and soft. Okay. So you chill them overnight, cut them the following day, they'd be kind of stiffish then, you know? Yeah. It was easier to cut them and everything else, it was easier work on them. Down into pickling them, were put into pickling them for about five or six days. And uh, they were salted as well as put into the pickle. They were put into tanks of pickle. There'd be two men there doing it. 
Okay. Every side they throw down, they pure piece of saw, turn on top of it, and throw another side down, a few piece. Now it could be 300 sides, three to 500 sides inside the tank. Okay. Of bacon. And, uh, we were there for a week. At the end of the week, you took it out and you piled it. It was, it was graded, what we call graded. And how was it graded then, John? Depending on the amount of patterns on it. Okay. They used to have a little gadget. Right. So you could check it if you needed to. We never needed it. We knew just looking at them. Okay. What grade they were, you so know. So if it was thick, was it was A, B, or, or C. A, B, or C. Yeah. If it was A, it'd be a very thin bit of pattern. Right. B, maybe a bit, little bit more fat, and C would be very fat. Be very fat in some of them. There was only three grades. So which would have been the best grade? Oh, the best would have been the A. The A, a grade. Okay. So the, the, par the, par the farmer got a couple of copy pens more. For the grading, yeah, grade. for the grading. Oh my gosh. And, uh, Just writing this down, sorry. And was there, um, like, was the A grade kept for selling here or was it exported? Or oh, the A grade sell here, but they had an A special, what they call a special, an right. A special. That would be for that would be for export, mainly okay. for export. They'd and sell the some of it between here. Between that then and, and the A. <laughs> There'd be so little to fat Very unless you'd have yeah. to eat, you know. Yeah. So the A special was exported. Um, yes, yeah, it was a depth of fat, basically it was rare one. And where were they export to then? Most of them were doing that. Yeah. I don't think they were exported anywhere else. They might have before yeah. my time. I know one time they were sending it to Russia and everywhere. Yeah. They even sent people out to Russia to show them how to, to kill the pigs and kill the bacon, build killing lines for them. Yeah. That's uh, very good. There's not a lot of history behind them. I don't know it all. That's fine. We try. I tried to look into it one time, and I was trying to get some passports. Actually, there was one chap has a passport. His uncle went out. Russia, Russia with a couple of more men here from Limerick butchers to show them how to set up the, the baking factories in Moscow. So that was a good while back? That's yeah. a good while back. Yeah. Jim Kimmy's father. Jim Kimmy was mayor here one time. Yeah. He went with him. He did not. He was a stonemason. He went out to build the furnaces. They were all made of stone or something that time. That's right. That was very good. But, um, well, you feel the bacon was cured then, as I said, in the tank, five or six days, taken yeah. out of that and graded and put into separate piles. Mm -hmm. and packaged, packaged sold. Yeah. Uh, what we used to do then is uh, there'd be a certain amount of the bacon, uh, the, the, the C grade, the fat grade, yeah. would be used for rushers. Mm -hmm. Now, we used, to, we used to do any rashers, but we'd get the side ready for rashers, we'd sell it to the shop, and the shops used to cut their own rashers at the time. They had a machine that they cut their own rashers. And what shops were these done? Most of the baking shops, just butcher like stall, any? butcher stalls, you know. Oh, and even some, some, of, some, of the, some of the grocery shops that have a machine that cut the rashers. Okay. I remember having a big row of them one one time, because I went into a shop oh, in on. Uncle Key, Lynch, yeah. sorry, in yeah. Lynch. And uh, I wanted rashers. And I asked the girl, could I have a pound of rations? Well, we haven't any, she said. And I was looking at the bacon on the counter. And she said, can you not cut a pound for me? I said, well, we haven't any, she said. So I was getting a little bit easy. Yeah, I tried yeah. to keep my patience. I said, can you cut a bit of that for me, say? Oh, that's not for rations. What's it for, say? Mm. It's a special bacon, she says, for rations. Listen, girl, say you're talking to someone else who says he's doing this all his life. Yeah. That I know more about bacon say, than you know. And I'm telling you to say, a middle is for rations. That is the middle there. I said it's even split in two. I said you have the back end and the mid the belly end. Yeah. You can cut the streaky rashers off the belly end, you can cut the back rashers off of the back end. I said, that's where they come from. No, can you cut me a pound of rashers? No. All right. She wouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> so she probably didn't know how to use the machine. Maybe, yeah. That's right. But like I said, we used to make what they call long cleave. You know, that down yeah, there. yeah, long cleave. You took out the rib, you took out the hawk. And I was left, it was just a carcass, there was no bone left in it. It went down, 
stairs onto a pile and salt it. You put salt into the pocket where the hawk came out on the shoulder and you cover the rest of it with salt. It was left there on the pile for another week. That would go hard. And it was left there long enough. The fat would even go pink. And, uh, was that good, John, if it went pink? Oh, yeah. yeah. Most of that was sold to the farmers. They'd be looking for it, especially at harvest time, where they'd have people in working. They'd be feeding them and they'd feed them. Be, hey, what, what, used to, there was a story one time they used to feed them hairy bacon and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> but where the hairy bacon came out, there was a lot of the farmers started curing their own bacon. Okay. They'd kill their own pig and cure their own bacon. They used to cure, cure it in what we call the tears. Remember I was telling you about the tears? Yeah, the they'd barrel. barrel. They'd cure it in that. They'd put the bacon into that, the sides of the, the pork, and when it's going into it, cover it with salt, bury it in salt. Mm. And leave it there. You could leave it there forever in the salt. Okay. Uh, they used to use it. The longer you left it there, the more flavour it got? Uh no, no, definitely the salt here it got. Okay. Flavour, I was never too keen on the flavour of it. I remember one time, I was only a young lad. I think it was only what, about 18 years of age. And I went into clover meads. Started working clover meads. The first job I, I got was to clear out what we call an ice house. Mm-hmm. That's where they used to keep the long clear and store mm-hmm. it in there. And uh, there was that height of salt, there was two feet of salt, maybe two or three on the floor. So we had to go in, bag it all, and get it out of there. And we found a side of bacon, tears of bacon inside the end of it, buried in salt. It could have been there years. Oh my god. It was this pink, it was a beautiful colour pink. So we asked well, what what we do? We just the we thought to throw it out, you know. No, he said bring it down to the shop. We had our own shop there where they used to sell to the trade. Where was your shop? In Clover Meads. Oh, I'm talking about Clover Meads now, that's oh, where we started, right. yeah. And uh, we brought it down to the shop. There was a queue. I mean, they nearly beat one another. Oh, looking yeah. for a bit of it. The the butchers themselves. So it didn't cost him nothing. The, the lad that was in the shop cut it up and gave everyone it, or as many as he could a piece of it, yeah. you know. But I remember the father got a bit of it. I didn't like it. You could eat the fat. It wasn't too bad. But the lean meat was like a bit of string. Like right. eating a bit of string. It was gone real hard. I'd say you'd want to buy it and buy it till the days came. The cows came home as I mentioned. <laughs> the clients softened it. But the cabbage used to be beautiful of it. Bile, bile with cabbage used to be built. <coughs> so that was the way, that's what happens with the peas. They made lard up with. Tony Madden used to do the lard. And what was the lard used for then? It was cooking. Cooking, was it? yeah. <coughs> okay. Tony Madden used to do the lard. And he was one of the lads, one of the five of us mm-hmm. at the time. He ended up doing the lard. Larry ended up pumping bacon. Okay, and we pumping were bacon with the salt, is it? Yeah, the pickle. When we were curing the bacon, as I said, you had to come down along like, on the uh, yeah. line. We trimmed, cut, whatever had to be taken out, was taken out, came around into a pumping machine. And before it went to the pumping machine, it was after. Before it went into the pump, I'm not 100% sure, no, Larry, baby, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. what happened. That you had to pump it with bacon, with pickle. You pumped there, put a long nose on it, and stuck it in the side, pumped it, the pickle into it. Okay. Uh, that was to get the pickle in to pockets that it wouldn't be reached by the machine. Yeah. The machine then to go through the machine, the machine was all down like down like pipe and go down that way. Pump it. Into the skin. Into this it? into this flesh. Okay. And uh, go down into the tanks then after that. To be called to be cured. But we, we all ended up in a job. Where we were supposed to learn Every job in the place. Mm-hmm. We ended up in one particular job. We were left there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, anyway, before we finished up, things were getting bad on. We used to kill nearly a thousand pigs one time a day. We were down to probably about 300 a week. Maybe, and when was maybe this, a bit John? more. Sorry to interrupt. When was that? I went in down 63. 63, so there might have been a thousand a might, day. Could, well, not every day. Okay. You'd have a thousand some days, 500, 600, you know? Yeah. But by the time I finished up there, we were only killing about 
by the tune, even, even worth talking about that. We'd probably be killed at 300 a day, two to 300 a day. Right. And then uh, it went to two or 300 a week. This is maybe later on. That was coming up into, that was in the 80s. 80s. Yeah, late 80s, early, early to mid-80s. Right. Big I change. went into the sausage department then, when I'd be finishing the killing. I used to do the sausage department. And was, you had to close down the sausage department for the killing anyway, because there was five or six girls working in the sausage department and they were needed on the killing line. Mm. So we'd go in the morning at eight o'clock and we'd start up the sausage department. The killing was at three o'clock, so we shut down the sausage department at half past two. And the girls would go to the killing and hope we'd have enough sausages made for the vans and so on and for a start for the following morning. And, uh, I finished up with the sausage department. But isn't it funny, the things I remember was not the jobs. Yeah, it's good, it's it's, whatever um, you're remembering. I was representing the lads there, union wise. I was secretary, treasurer for Butcher Society. I was also a delegate to the union, to the branch. I ended up being chairman and several branches in the union, but anyway, we had a meeting one day, it would be been around 1980, it would have been the early 80s, definitely mm. around 1980, with a company from Dublin. Um, they came down to measure the work, as simple as that, they came down to, to measure, measure, the the, measure the work. Oh yeah, okay. Of what we were doing and how it could be done more economically mm -hmm. or faster, or whatever, or better setting up a bonus scheme. So we were having a hassle with them. We wouldn't agree to their figures. They'd want us to do, we'd say, ten pigs an hour, and we'd say, no, eight pigs an hour. You know, this kind of thing. Yeah. We were at a meeting one day, and this uh, Fine and Jerry Fine, he was their engineer. He turned on me inside of one of the meetings. Well, by the way, Johnny says, we want you, we want you to take over the sausage department, he says. Now, this is a lucrative job, taking over the sausage yeah. department. There was lots of overtime and everything else, yeah. you know, it was good money there. And uh, I nearly went down to the floor and just looked at me. I said, my face probably reddened up a bit all right. <laughs> bit it back, I said nothing, I was going to have a go at him, I said nothing. And Jerry, I talked to you, said, when the meeting is over. Now, it was like he's offering me a bribe, a bribe. So I made a bead, the minute the meeting finished, I made a beeline for the door to catch him before he went out. And the manager, my Lamar, beat me to it, he got in before I did. <laughs> and in fairness, him, he had the raw flesh off him. Because he knew he was after putting me in a, in a spot. And your boss didn't want you to work in the sausage house? No, 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 not at all. I was doing that. I was, yeah. I was running the sausage house anyway. Yeah. But so the way he put it, it was like offering me a bribe. Yeah. That I'd Thank be left there and blah, blah, blah. There'd be no questions about anything and I'd be the boss. It was like as if he was offering me a bribe. So eventually I got him and then I said, Jerry, say, don't ever again. I said, Come near me, speak to me or anything else. I'm not negotiating anything, anything which you say to him. You've undermined everything, all my principles and everything else, they are now sitting with that meeting and say, you'll never do it again because I won't talk to you, I said. So you do what you believe in my life. <laughs> so I didn't, I wouldn't go to no more meetings. <coughs> I think I managed to rig up a bond scheme all right. Without me, that mm. wasn't the pay. I, I wasn't going to stop it by not going to, but I just wouldn't please him to yeah. go to any more yeah. meetings. But just like offering me a bribe. And I said to him, look, society. You're offering me what I'm already doing, I said to him. i tell you what I do, I said, when we've finished, I said, and we have the factory turned around and on its feet, I said, I'll do the job, I said. I'll do the job as foreman, I said to him. And I'll be put on staff, I said. On what? On staff. Okay. In other words, the same as the office staff or anyone yeah. else, I'll be put on the same level of staff, I said to him. And uh, then I'll do it, I said to him, otherwise I keep out of my way. But, um, it didn't materialise. I was—I'd I was, done the sausage department all right, but uh, they never came around to 
20 meters tap. If the head, I'd mm. very well when it closed. Okay. The staff yeah. were on a very good wages, so... Oh, we were on good wages. Mm. It was tough work. It was really tough work. People used to say we didn't work. See, what happened is uh, there were big gates out onto the street. Yeah. Oh, huge big gates where lorries clover, would be coming is in. Is this Clover? Both Clover and Omar. Okay. Where the lorries would back in. We'd load the, the bales of export up on the lorries and they'd take up wherever they were taking them. And we'd have our own lorries coming in and out being loaded. And if there was lads inside what we called baling, baling was wrapping up the bacon. So we used to call it baling. If there was three, four tables baling, and anyone passed up and looked in, they'd see four or five fellas sitting on a table, different tables, you know? Yeah. 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 They'd be waiting for bacon to come out. Right. To wrap it. Yeah. And every uh, time you passed, you saw some... You, you saw someone sitting couple down. sitting down. So they never worked. The butchers never worked. Nice. <laughs> <coughs> I remember going to uh, oh. going up across the I'll just right. pause. Hey Larry. Can I just pause this for one second? Now just continuing on and um, we've Larry Duggan joining us from O'Mara's and Clover Meats. Yes. No. We started up in um, we started up in O'Mara's as well. It was about uh, six uh, Clover Meats and Dogs of Bay. Actually we went down to get a job. Uh, and, uh, Mr. O'Connor was the manager at the time, and I went in for a job. And uh, he refused me a job, like, simply because uh, I didn't know what the situation was. Like, I just went in asking for the job, mm -hmm. because some of my brother said there was jobs coming on in Clover Meats. And I was after working in the hotel business for a while, like, the, from 14 up to 16. I was just after finish, finish the season in the Hydro Hotel. And I went in and I just asked Mr. Connor for a job. It was no, it was small and thin at the time. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, you wouldn't be no good around. You wouldn't be so strong <laughs> enough to do. So I was coming out that time. The, you went in through the office through the side door. You know what I mean? I was coming out there and I met an uncle of mine outside the door. And he said, uh, what are you doing? I'm down for a job. And uh, when you start, oh, no, he told me I had no job, sir. What on there a minute? He said, stop, stop, stop. He looked over a call like my And then we up to, to the office to see O'Connor. Well, five minutes after Mr. O'Connor came to the whole after the copy the end, which got him down. Come here, come here, he says to me. Did you tell me you were a butcher? No, I didn't know what a butcher was. Yeah. I didn't know. See, at that time, you, your father had to be a butcher before you came a butcher. My father had died when I was seven, yeah. so I didn't know. If he was and my brother didn't bother telling him that he to tell me that you could go <laughs> down and get a job. And I went out just looking for a job. I thought he said, go down, this job's going down there. Yeah. But apparently, that. There was Yanks in implied at the time. And once there's Yanks implied, you have to be implied. Yeah. You have to even if that is like a Yank. You get the job. You have to get you have to get the job by the Yanks implied. So that's why your uncle was said, well, why when are you starting? You know. Yeah. He didn't ask me why, what happened. Yeah. I didn't, he didn't he explain to me. He, he didn't know I was going in for it for a start. Right. You know, because if I went and asked my uncle, he might have been more explained to my brother. My brother's job's gone down there and wanted that job. I was telling you we weren't too well out. That's part of the reason. Because it was a closed job. If your father wasn't a butcher, you couldn't be a butcher. Yeah. You couldn't get in there. And uh, if you got in there at all, as Larry says, you'd be in as a yank, which was just an ordinary labour. Like you'd done everything and it's seasonal. Yeah. But we were very powerful. Union ways, mm. I'd say we were probably the most powerful that I had. Yeah, because we, we were a close shop in before it started. Mm. And then uh, if, we, if the officers had said something, and then they were powerful because. You had to, like, you had to pay your contributions, mm -hmm. and if you were more than eight weeks, and a nice thing that happened, you know, if you were more than eight weeks in arrears, you were stopped in the you know? and told to go away and get the money for your contributions, That's or you won't crazy. be left kind. And the, the, the employer could do nothing about it. If you needed you, it didn't matter. Yeah. The, the, the union was in charge. Union. If you were in arrears. So what did you pay every week then? It, is a very fair, very fair, it varies different amounts in different years, because they put levies on you if they needed it, you know what I mean? The, the, the stairs, in that particular, it was nearly uh, six shillings there, it was the average. Six was the average. But if you can go back over it, there's different... And that uh, was January 1967. And that's the last we said, you know what I mean? You paid... Yeah. So you paid Out of your wages. Yeah, you paid, you paid directly. You paid... We, we had our own rooms outside. You know, the sex zone. It used to be the sex zone. It's now the jewellers. Keen's jewellers. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, were, we had our own rooms upstairs. Up in the first we floor. had the first floor there. And we kept the floor... The first two, two... One particular room was for the pensioners. 
they could come in there all day, every day of the week. If there was a fire put in front, they could make their own tea and coffee. And, and we did pay for it. Yeah. And we paid for it. You know, that was yeah. kept going for the whole day while we were active. You know what I mean? It's it, it a great place for them. They brought in their friends. You know, no restrictions. Yeah. It was open every day for them. And, uh, and then, yeah. they could use it. They'd come down then every day. And they'd, they'd ask when factories come down and pay their dues. It was no stop at wages. It wasn't stopped at wages at that time. Okay. You had to pay it yourself. Did you get sick pay then or what? Oh, it was on that like that. See, that, that, That's the proof. We did get sick pay. We did we get pensions even. We had a pound a week pensions. And, and this is from which factory? This, this is from the total. This is just society. Oh, this is society. That's not any factory. But Larry, Larry has it up to 68 here. I have it going back to the 30s. You have it earlier. Go back the one I gave you that yeah, would yeah. show you that the pay is the difference. sick pay. So you, you see the different pays different years and you'll find that there's this is, yeah, this is 1935. Yeah. It's a different uh, pay. It's just, it tells you it's happy to seek a pay. Patients, patients are sick pay. Yeah. Different what what, what date were you looking at there, Larry, with right? six children? 68 was that it? That was 67. 67. Yeah. 67, back in the 60s. But we, we paid, you see, they paid the society, and the society as a group then paid our contributions to the union in bulk. You know what I mean? We paid, a, we, we were we paid X amount. We paid a separate, you know, you had to pay the society first. The union was paid, everyone was just in the contribution. Even people in America, we paid for people in America. Once you're on the book, you were paid from the union. Right. And the big good thing about that is that when we went on strike, the union paid for, for every member, even if they never worked. But once it's on the book, we got paid for them. Okay. So it had a benefit back when we were on strike. Please. For the society. And when was this strike, Larry? Any oh, any strike. Oh, any strike. Loads okay, of strikes. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Different strikes. Any strike you had, yeah. you paid, you only paid us in bulk. Yeah. And we paid the members. Very good. And so that we, we, we the society got a few bulk benefit back. Out of it. You know what I mean? So, we, you know, it worked both It ways. worked good for you. Yeah, yeah. but we paid, we, we paid for years, but for everyone, whether they were there, we kept their character. Whatever, well, there was a lot in England, there was a lot going to the States. We paid their union dues. They kept their union membership open the whole time. So you went away, if you went away to England, like you were still paid for in the union. Your, your union was kept paid for and We went away to England and we got jobs. So when we came back, we just re kept paying the society. Like, okay, very good. Very, very good. Different might, I might show Jackie that, if that's okay. Okay, you can go that to But just if you're doing away with it, don't do away with it. Just keep it. No, we if won't. You, oh, my if, God, if you keep them here, you can. You know, but and we have put, your one, John. Put, put, well. uh, put a name down it, that we, who, we and John's name, mm -hmm. so that if you're gone, give them if back. If you're using this. Yeah. If you're not using yeah, it, we we'll probably be done away with it. We can yeah. put it somewhere. We were thinking, I was thinking about And this one then is a sick book. That's the sick and pension. And pension. Sick and pension. And this is the 1930s. Yeah, is it from there on? I was, I was thinking about them even. Should they go up in the mechanics because there isn't too much... Well, yeah, we could, we could leave in the mechanics. There isn't years left yeah. in us as the man. Yeah, no, but no, because at least some people yeah. would not be looking for us. We might leave here to put in a stall or put something there yeah. from, you know. Yeah, yeah, I can say it's... Whatever, the there's, yeah. there's a library in the mechanics where they can be kept. Yeah. Right. As long as they're mm. kept somewhere. Kept somewhere, yeah. yeah. We, we can cover, we, I think we might do a pay, pay for a few bucks and get them covered. Yeah. And yours, and can, uh, no, so that okay. you recover them yeah. and leave into the and leave we'll them there. We'll do that, yeah. Yeah. So that would be a proper thing to do. Mind them. I'd yeah. probably leave them though, Larry. I'd probably leave them as there. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait for yeah. the time being, but I mean, if I had to cover them, to preserve them longer, would they keep yeah. them longer? But the best so person I would know would be Jackie. She'd yeah. be the, the person. Yeah, does. but she can tell us what she wants yeah. to think. So if she thinks it's a couple of bob, we'd be paid for a couple of bob. If she thinks it's better. If she thinks to mine them. Yeah, to mine okay. them. Okay. Well, so do you want to take these photographs? Okay. So this is. You want to take a copy of those? There, I right might, there. I will do if yeah. that's all right. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is you, so, and do you want to explain yeah. what this photograph is? This one, we were doing a trip to Ham for the mayor, the mayor of London. So what? You just sent Ham over to. The, no, the, the mayor of London came on a visit. The mayor was visiting Limerick. Okay. And this so was in 1971? 1971. He okay. was the mayor of so we as uh, the company yeah. were presenting him with a ham, a Limerick ham, so that yeah. he, had, he said some, bit something from Limerick. It's so a nice part of Limerick's history there, isn't it? So we were trimming the ham for him, you know what I mean? There was a bit of a controversy over the 71 because the troubles had started in the north and those people came down at the time mm. to object to the mayor coming, you know? Okay. Yeah, I can understand, yeah. But you know, yeah, I mean, it happened to me 71, so it didn't, we got over it, like, you know, we didn't close the door problem, but <laughs> you know, we just gave him the hand, like, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. But isn't it funny? You probably you won't remember it, but the Limerick Hammers fans all over the world, not just in yeah. Limerick, all over the world. Why I don't know. I was just going to ask you why do you think no, it was? I don't know. I mean, the ham here was the same as the ham in Cork for Dublin. But probably the way they made it. Maybe the cure. Longer, I don't know. The cure and maybe the, the Limerick water. Or we had our own supply of water. In in Amara, you know, maybe Actually, it's something. We, we, they had their own well, and it was it's still there. It's in it's in the um, electric shop there in Penucan. Oh, uh, it was it's no, yeah. Is it? Do you know where Penucan had this shop there at the corner of um, Ann Street yeah. and yeah. Tom Street? Yeah. It's, it's underneath there. Swab so had an electric Swab's yeah. shop there. Swab yeah. was his name. Swab's he was German. Yeah. And there was a big yard there, what we called College Yard. To the vet, the vet, the veterinary yard one time, wasn't it? Yeah, in Maribor. Oh, Maribor. Yeah. You said he was business there. Yeah. Cure. But underneath Swab, you, go, you went to Swab. Swab had a garage the side of his shop. He went to the garage. The floor was boards. The lift boards. There was a well. It was a deep well too, I believe. It was supposed to be the finest water in the city. Oh yeah. boy. So we used to use that. We couldn't use it all. We had to use, seemingly we had to use a certain amount certain of the, the city yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, so we used to use the city water for washing down the factory. Okay. For making the peak and everything else, we used to use the well water. The spring water. Spring water. For the f- so we had to be very careful. We had to have it analysed and checked to make mm. sure there was no bugs and yeah. anything else. With that. When they went into the EC, they stopped all that. Why EC regulations, I don't know the hell. They, they, they wouldn't trust it. The, the regulations were the regulations so the was was because we were in a city and then all the fact that if you realize that at that time there was 39 baking factories in Ireland and we I went up we were see myself and John we were the representative I was up board and John, I was I was on it before John came on it we were we up to Dublin and negotiated for all the, the baking factories in Ireland we were on the baking company the joint the labour joint GIC, industrial yeah. committee you know, the which one is the that? GIC, it was the G- GIC GIC for joint industrial Company. okay so all the all the companies just get together and all the workers just get together and represent them from all the different factories mm-hmm. and so we represented Limerick and the uh, work at that time there was baking factories in all the major cities mm. and so as far as the uh, Limerick world from uh, Cork, Cork, Cork yeah. Dublin, Trolley, mm. even, you know what I mean? And the problem that it meant when we joined the scene, none of them had effluent plants. Okay. And you would, uh, 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 to get over that, they were giving them grants. But if you stayed in the city, you got a lesser grant. So if you moved out, you moved out they didn't of the, want city, you in the city, didn't want you in the Is city. Is that for hygiene? For, for uh, effluent. Health and Health and effluent. Yeah. Our effluent, uh, excuse the expression, shit and dirt and mm. everything within, blood, everything went straight into the sewers. Oh, right, yeah. Straight into the water. Did you see come down? Yeah. It's come down the well. Yeah, really. Come down so you can see, you see people yeah. there, and you see, you, know, you see the blood flow out. Oh, you will. The tractor is working. Well, that yeah. means people are the doctor. We get loads of eels. In front of Bannington's hospital. Yeah. We get loads of eels. We get loads yeah. of The fish will be fallen down. Yeah. No. But they're in front of Barrington's hospital. That bridge, you know the Humpback Bridge there? Hold on, give me one second. So Barrington's, yeah. yeah. Barrington's out yeah. here. The hospital. Yeah. Just in front of that, there's a... There pipe coming out of the wall I, at the yeah, other side, and there was pipe. one coming on both sides of the wall of the bridge. The, the, the effluent from Matheson is just to come out of this one. The one on the other side of the bridge just with lower meads. So it all just flowed straight. Oh, it just flowed into the Abbey River, directly into the river now. For that reason, they were told they'd have to build effluent plants in the factories, which is impossible in some cases. In our case, it was nearly impossible because we we were just the one we were the one square in there in Rochester Street, Thomas Street. Yeah. And you hadn't room to expand. We, well, no. we had we had expanded over as far as the College Yard, we call it, John. You know what I mean? Where's College Yard? That, that's the yard where we done the smoke peaks and where the, where the well was. Was it across the way? Across or the way. Was it, it, it was a straight across the way. Where, where the electric place we were talking about. Okay. That was called the yard, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was a, called after, it was just it's called built up now. It was, it, it, it was a yard. yard. It was a veterinary yard. And we used to keep our lorries in there. There was an old house in there. And we took out the, the upper floor. Yeah. And use the rafters overhead to hang the bacon yeah. out of it, and we did smoke fires on the floor. Yeah. The smoke used to. And how long did you bacon. keep the pigs in there then? Two days, wasn't it? You, could put, you, one day, you do one day dry, and the first thing you put in, uh, it does uh, f- fire, a little fire. Mm. But I mean, actually, inside it does. Sawdust and straw. Yeah, sawdust and just a smolder. Mm. Dry yeah. You had to dry the bacon for a day for, for overnight. And when and you say dry, do you mean just leave it there with no fire? Or are you no, 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 no
really area, you know, the fire had gone all night. Yeah. And uh, night times it was getting a sawdust fire, so the smolder slowly. But it came, it came up, uh, you know, going away. It wouldn't, it wouldn't light as such, it would just smolder. It would smolder. be heat, smolder, you know, the way you okay. fire just smolder yeah. away. Yeah. It was like, it's like it's like it was a, a barrel. But when you put in the sawdust, you packed down the sawdust in, in the barrel, but you drove a hole down the centre of it, right? Yeah. You lit the bottom. Lit a fire, small fire underneath the bottom, and the bottom it was the 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 the, the, the flames come up, just burn the, the sawdust. Yeah. But it, it would last for hours and hours and hours. That's very clever. You know what I mean? So it was that's how the last time, that's how we drive yeah. it. You know what I mean? You drive it, and then you put sawdust and uh, shavings and, and more sawdust on the ground, and the next day, and you can burn that up, and that was give a bit of timber to give to, to smoke it. But then it wasn't dry, you could smoke them, you couldn't dry them. You wouldn't smoke them, you hadn't dried first. You know, okay. so that, that was a it's smoking process. The, um, do we talk about the Jesus right. growing up as a youngster? The mother, all the women, most of the women in Limerick, most of the houses in Limerick, would be always looking for oil bins, old oil bins, about, you know, these high, about this height, you know, these oil bins. Yeah. They'd be always looking for them. And, uh, Why is that? Larry said, knock a hole in the bottom yeah. of it, put it up on two bricks, two red bricks or two cement blocks, it didn't matter. Pack it with sawdust, put the hand of the brush down through it. Yeah. And pack the sawdust down tighter on it. You take out the hand of the brush, then you have a hole like that coming up. Yeah. You lit the bottom. And so the sawdust is small the way all day. So and they'd put a bat. Yeah. They'd put a bat on top of that. To heat to heat the water. When the water was hot enough, they'd wash the clothes. That is mad. There was no heat in the houses. So no hot water or such unless you buy the kitchen and that wasn't enough to so you wash. wash the clothes. Even yeah. if you'd taken a bat yourself, you had to use one of these bloody well bats. And how long would it take to heat up the water? A couple of hours? A couple of hours. Yeah. Depends on how hot the time is. We we used to make slow burning. Yeah. We used to make money out of it. We 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 yeah, we we, 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 we go down put, down to make matters. And we get barrel loads of sawdust and bring them up for six months. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like my hands on the dock room, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Waste yeah. paper. Any chance you'll get to make a few shillings. You get waste paper and take it up. There was a factory there, you take it up to the factory. Very you got so much a bag, with a tuppence a bag or something like that. A waste paper. It was sold by weight, but you can only judge. And uh, the fellow next to living next to John who used to rare pigs, you know what I mean? Sonny Mac. And he gave you a few bob going around to the house collecting waste skins, waste skins, and skins and not having been left over for the pigs. The pigs. Just feed the pigs from the bus left. We don't have a couple of shillings. We were only young lads. So this was next to you. And where yeah, did you yeah, live, John? Yeah, his house. Next to John's house. Rocks 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 Road. You open the bus carriages now? Yeah. Straight across the road. Oh, the new houses there. Okay. His house is there. My house is just around the corner. There were steps going down there. Yeah. Port Willis was gone. And how many pigs did he keep in the... Yeah. He's killed them, he's killed two or three, he's killed them. He's killed two or three. He's killed between ten and twenty. Huh? And, and he, he just kept I them to sell? Uh, oh yeah, he bring them to the factory when they were children. It's very, very economical. A lot of people just keep them in their back, in their back, in their back houses for years. I'd love to meet someone who had done this. There's Sunday back with the nearest one that we'd know, that we remember, you know what I mean? There's a, I think what's the name of once down uh, Willie Allen, I don't know, but they had, they had bigger cars and you know what I mean, yeah. a bit of Noel Brown, yeah, Noel know. Brown lived down the Roxford Road beside yeah. Buckner's Pub. Yeah, they used to do it as well. He used to do it, no, he's still alive, Noel is. Well, he, his parents would have been around the pigs. But, uh, Where did you go then for the scraps for the pigs? Just around the houses, yeah. And people didn't people. give you any grief coming around. No, no, they're, 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 they're regular people. He used to go to the, the, he used to, go to the hotels himself Correct. because he had a lorry. Yeah. And he had a big barrel in the lorry, a couple of barrels in the lorry. Yeah. 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 We started off with a horse and car, like all the people did. We started off with a horse and car. And then eventually he got a lorry, you know, because he started just doing the coal business. He did not break and blocks. Breaking blocks and doing all that. Hybrid industry. What made me laugh, and nobody, nobody ever tweeted it. There was a sewerage <coughs> running across the front of the houses from CIE. Came down to the Kennedy Park then. The sign appeal, yeah. under the road, across the front of our yard, and it never touched our yard, yeah, yeah. it was inside the wall. But it came out and it passed our house. A couple of sunny it cut across the yard. It was going into the trench, going down by Barrett's and down yeah, the yeah, back yeah, of ours yeah, as well. Yeah. And the uh, CIE ran a pipe down, sewage pipe down to Weston. There was a plant over in Weston. 
Frieden bleibt. Big Pipe, dort ist es. Das ist der Amateur, you know. Mm. And Sonny got very clever. Sonny had a job getting rid of the, the waste and the peas, you know, and everything else. And he couldn't throw it around the gardens because it smelled of high heaven. He used to take it down to Cork and Reeves the dump out in the dock road. Up. And I don't know, was there questions about that even? Maybe the corporation gave her after him to come and say something. I don't know about that, I don't know. But he got very clever anyway when they put in the sewage. He got a hole in the concrete pipe. There were big concrete pipes. He got a hole in the pipe. And the pipe into it. And all the waste and the piggery used to go down <laughs> into the sewer. <laughs> <coughs> no, 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 no permission or nothing. No permission. There was a fellow built houses there recently. Only a few years ago. And he couldn't open the houses. He, he, couldn't, he, he couldn't, couldn't open, open the houses. Them, right. he, he knew there was a sewers there and he thought he'd get a connection into it, no problem. Yeah. But when he got up when he went looking for the connection, it was a CIE sewers, so private sewers they wouldn't allow him in. Right. So he couldn't open the houses. And it's been sorted out since. I think yeah. the corporation maybe bought the houses off him and, uh, and they had a, they had a sewer and water as well, put it into that, connected in there somewhere. I'm only guessing. I don't know how it worked out. Why are you surprised at things? Factories. I was telling her about Don and the whistle. Oh, yeah. Do you want to say that? Yeah. Don was the foreman we had. He could be not obnoxious at times. He wouldn't treat you very nicely most of the time, but uh, if he wanted you, and especially in a curing house, a chill house, you could be a hundred yards away, yeah. and he'd rather than be shouting, John, he probably wouldn't hear him over the noise of some machines or something. He got a whistle, he decided to call you a whistle. And to, did it to Tony Judge, so Tony yeah. whipped the whistle out of oh his yeah. office <laughs> one morning, and put it in the vice, and flattened it, and put it back in again. <laughs> So he got a message, he didn't use the whistle anymore. He stopped using the whistle? Yeah, yeah. People, 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 people most people wouldn't take any notice of it. No, no. So don't be, what You'd ignore it. Yeah. It's in my power if I can't hear you. Rather than whistling down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you tried anything once, and if you got away with it, that kind of reform, yeah. like you, you didn't care, had no feelings for the people, like you, I wouldn't say I'm not sympathetic, but he was rough, you know what I mean? Mm. He, he was a manager, a management. Oh, he was a management yeah. form. Yeah. 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 So was, no, like Mikey Kelly came after him. You could talk to Mikey. If you had a problem, he talked to you. He wouldn't be rolling shelters. Yeah. And if you had, if, if you had, had a dispute with Mikey, you, it was between yourself and Mikey. You just really got to management. <laughs> <laughs> but if you went to Tom O'Brien with a problem, you had an argument with Tom O'Brien, it's up to the management. Okay. He, he tried to get me sacked one day. Like oh, I was in the union, so any time we had, any time we had, I'd have to go up and try to solve the problem. If I need, he'd break your heart like to solve problems. But, I was there one day and I went. Is it Scover? Is it? Sorry, no Mars. Sorry, it's no Mars. Tom was he wasn't he's, he was he, he was he, I don't think he ever worked in uh, Jonas Tom O'Brien himself. But he this day and I was uh, he, I was dropped to go up to the sausages and uh, cut up meat for the sausages for sausages. So I was cut off a rib, you know, and I liked the pork ribs myself. Like, so I cut off the pork rib. Naturally, you leave more leave meat, meat. That is for yourself. You <laughs> can leave a bit more extra meat on the, on the, on the bones for yourself. Yeah. So, I, I, well, I slightly exaggerated, you know what I mean? So, I send it down, I, I send it down to the shop to be paid for, you know, to be, and you're, you, you put in your arm every Tuesdays and Fridays for, if okay. you want to, if you wanted me often or anything you wanted, you had two days to order them, you know, so I send it down for my, for my order. And there it down was passengers, you know what I mean? And he saw this. He went straight up to me, Kevin. The middle. And he got it. He asked the fellow who's the who, who, who's in that. Oh, Larry Lancer. Straight up to me, Kamara. You know what I mean? Now, I want him sacked. He's after destroying the whole pig. Look at this. Look at look look at the blood. Look at the meat he left on that. On that. Look at it. Look at it. The whole pig was begun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did exaggerate by putting the meat on it. But I didn't work because I was paying for like. But anyway. He was in the comet, he was in for, you know, we had to hook up to, what they say, what they say, what they say, what they say, what they and uh, it went in, I said, look, we do nothing wrong, what do you mean, you look at it, it looks a bit, I think we try a pig, I was after cut up meat for sausages, it was dear, I was paying more for it than we were getting for the sausages, but he didn't realise, 
that the, what they want the, the real uh, dealer in the sense that the meat that they, the pig I took it off it was yes. being destroyed anyway oh, okay. uh, it wasn't being destroyed don't get me wrong it was a meat it was, it was too skinny for for to go through the shops to yeah. sell so it's, uh, what to do any meat that's not suitable for the selling which is not unsuitable for eating yeah. but no it's too skinny or too not enough fat in it you know it's, it has to be certain grades it was the same. Shop. Same yeah. so yeah. Yeah. it was yeah. put into the sausage meat you know yeah. what I mean it wasn't bad nothing wrong with the meat but uh, I was, well, I said, I'd be paying for it, so I might as well give more to myself because it's dearer, that was dearer than the sausages, the, the rib was dearer than the sausages. I was like a devil. Couldn't you know that he thought he had me gone? Yeah. He thought he had, you know. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, if he came up and asked me, if he came up and asked me, I'd give out to me, like, like my, that was my Oh, yeah, he used to, to, to give it to me. He used to give it to me. What was that? Who was that? Uh, you know, Dom O'Brien. Dom O'Brien. Maybe it was his makeup. He had only one leg. Maybe that got him. Yeah. was getting him down. He had one leg? He had only one leg. He lost a leg. He had two legs. Like like kind of yeah. like uh, he, he eventually had to get it off. You know, right. That might have made him cantankerous too. You wouldn't yeah, know. Yeah. You know. Or he had a cantankerous wife to go to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the matter of it. Yeah. Was, he, he, he was always, uh, you know, he was never, he was never always a management man, you know what I mean? So like uh, John said, if Michael Callan had that problem, he'd come up and say, what's your afternoon there? You're just trying to say the thing. You're just trying to pick, you'll you get us all into trouble. Like, yeah. that's, he, that's what he'd say. I said, I said, oh, that's all right, so he'd say, you know. But I was Don't paying, do I it again, you know. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Yeah. Well, I said, that's grand. I said, well, so long as they know what we're doing. Yeah, and that you weren't, you know, that you weren't actually, if you if you actually done that to a pig, you would destroy the pig, naturally. But what, I said, look, it's paying for it, Mike, it's not a problem. I said, you don't have to be to shop to get away and pay it for it, you know what I mean? So you will get, they will get more value out of it, me ben, buying it. But when Ben told about it. going to win yeah. boards, I said, oh, he said, look, he said, like that, it would never have gone, if John said, it would never have gone to the management. Mm. It's a different, a different kind of form, and like, yeah. he went straight, uh, straight, he said, oh, I have him now, you know, attitude. Yeah. He just didn't care. <laughs> Which he didn't care, like, whether, whether he got me sacked or not. I could have been there are times you have to go to management. We oh, yeah, you know, very interesting. We had we had some so But were management nice? How would you describe management? Management are very social. I mean, Kevara was one of the better employers in the, the three bacon factories. Like he the, was, I, I I I felt sorry for him when the factory closed because he was one nice employer. I give him that. He, he he could be cross when he had to be. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, he was fairly fair. Yeah. Very fair. I remember one instance that we had uh, to tell you how fair he was in time. We had we, we negotiated a, a new pension scheme, which they hadn't got in for. Well, none of the banking practice had a pension scheme, so we had, we, we we were paying the pension, mm -hmm. but then we negotiated a pension scheme, and one of the lads in the factory was out sick, and you had to be there to register for for the pension. You had to be working in the factory at the time. It was uh, negotiated within that year. Mm -hmm. so, say with, uh, it was uh, 85. You had to be registered, you working in the factory during 85. Yeah. And this fellow wasn't, uh, he was out sick. And uh, he was a Joe Finnis was his name. He was out sick. And I went to him, oh, we have a problem, Mickey. This was fortunate. And he's, he's there, he was there in the factory for nearly 30 years. He's, oh got, to, he's got to lose all his pension rights. And uh, he. We have to try, can we do anything for him? Like, and he said, what can we do? He said, we have to, he has to come into work. I said, we, well, I can't try, I can't try, I can't try to write him in as in, he's not in. Mm. And he was taken from, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you get him into work, if you can get him to, into the factory for a week or two, whichever he can manage, yeah. if he can down, he sits down in the cloak, he said. Just as long as he's there. He's, 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 he's yeah. into the factory. He's, he's into the factory. And if he wants to come out and walk around the place, if he, can, whatever, he's little, he's, he can do as little as he wants to do. Yeah. And we, we, I pay for the two weeks, whatever is required, to get him onto the picture scheme. No, we could have done another problem. So I'm sorry, sorry. Darling, that's not my problem. It's his problem. No, it's your problem. Sorry. Excuse me, so sorry. But he was a man you could talk to. You could talk to, like, if you have a problem, yeah. you know, I mean, I, we had people that would the birds have been sacked. You've got, look, we can give him the last chance. Okay. He's so he, got, he, he got his pension anyway? He got his pension anyway. His wife, but no, he actually he didn't, he, he got his debt benefit, which was just as important. Because by the time he, the pension was first signed off on, mm. he actually died. Okay. But his wife got his full debt benefit from yeah. the pension. His wife got the pension, you know. He didn't live to see it. Yeah. But, for, I mean, but it, it, that, that two weeks saved his, saved his wife yeah. Yeah. an awful lot of money, you know what I mean? Otherwise.
till three or four thousand at a time. It would be a lot of money in the in the eighties, like you know what I mean. So your wife is delighted for you, you know what I mean. And what was Limerick like at that time? In the 80s, can you remember anything about it? <laughs> we, we, we want a better word, you'd call it, say dirty. Was it? Because dirty there was a lot of bad buildings. No, 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 no. There was a lot of bad buildings, badly. The, mm, buildings were falling down. Right. It should have been repaired and all this kind of thing. It looked shabby. Mm. It really did look shabby. So you had both, both sides of Patrick Street, I think, were both shabby. <laughs> one side was worse than the other, you know, we had to eventually done up one side. They're the still, other side didn't look as They're bad. still working on it. Yeah. Well, the planning department is now over in Patrick Street. That's not too bad. It's the old town good. hall, that wasn't too bad. But mm. between it and Rutland Street, the buildings yes. were very bad, you know. It's and around bad. the corner, yeah. they were very bad. Yeah. They're still there. Living there. Well, people living there. People living around that area. Around flats and apartments. Yeah. And the and shops, there were shops underneath. But it was a shop waste was a prosperous little town. Was this? The shops were all making money, I think they were so all you had doing you had none of the outskirts then, you had to shop in town or not? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't you have didn't the shopping centres. The, the, the stores, like, and yeah. the, the, you didn't, of course, you were doing stores, weren't that big at the time anyway. But or you the had to local shops. You had your, you had your, you had your to stores, towns, you know what I mean? Yeah. You had all those at the time, they were the main shops, they were the main, you know, everyone. And even they weren't as expensive as they are today. You had the you know what I mean? Yeah. We were able to park our cars for most of the time in Thomas Street, you know what I mean? And then, at the latter years, before we finished, then they started to bring in um, this parking and we had to move our cars into the College Yard, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So we had Where's to College Yard? College, College, College Yard. College Yard, that's, sorry, College Yard. that's, 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 that's corner. Yeah. So Col- was the name of the person, the person that owned this, and right. owned the house there, that's why it was called College Yard. Just what you mentioned that, John, what was what the nicknames? Everyone had a nickname, you would Oh, saying. they had, yeah. Should I show that photograph? Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, one. This, this photograph here, black and white one. I won't know them all, but I know some of them. Knocker. He was called Knocker. Okay. Knocker Handy. Handy. Uh, Bo and Sheehan. Two of these were brothers now. Right. Sorrow and Bo. Where is he? There. This one, that one, were brothers. So to yeah. differentiate between them, he was, he was Bo and he was Sorrow. And why is that? Too? Just as you see it between yeah. them. But they didn't... He looked sorrowful. <laughs> okay, that's sorrowful. what I was trying to get at, yeah. <laughs> Why he was called Bowen, I'll never know. He was not her hand, mm-hmm. or this one. Yeah. Tom jo- How was Tom Joyce's nickname? How do you nickname? Mine was Cushy at the time. But Cushy? Yeah, Cushy. Yeah. <laughs> Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, outside of other names they call you when, when you were going to your back. You know I, mean? I can't remember all the names. Did you win? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. What was your one? So yeah, LOL. 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 Okay. L-O-L. Do you know why? No. I was no. A, what's his name? Shannis used to call me LON. L-O-L. <laughs> to tell you a different pronunciation the same word. What's his name? Oh, yeah, I never got on with him anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't remember them all. So, so you all had your own nicknames? No, th- that's how I was telling you that. If, you, if you're looking through the book, you'll see so many hills. Yeah. And they're all different families. Right. Some of them, a lot of them would be related. Like to brothers another. and fathers yeah. and cousins. But a lot more of them didn't be. There's a hills in Balananti, there's a hills in Gary Owen, and there's a hills in James. They could be yeah. three different complete families, no relationship at all. And to differentiate between them, you use the nicknames. Yeah. I thought no, they might have, they might have the nicknames here, but it's supposed to be too official. That's to too official. Where do you come from yourself? Me, um, Nakaderi, out in the county. No, well, you're not too far. Newport outside. County New- Newport. Newport outside in the, the county. It's the borders of Tip and they make mm. toss up where it is. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> There's an awful lot of Rhines living in right. Newport. Yeah. So to differentiate between one family and the other in Newport, they had the Rhine, the Rhine bonds. And Ryan, something else. I can't remember all the names. Yeah. I used to go over the girl there, that's how I knew it. She was one of the Ryan's. <laughs> and she was one of the Ryan Bonds. And you could be going with another Ryan, and it could be the Ryan Squirrel or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah. the yeah. Ryan Darrell. Yeah. So I found them, so I was working that time. Huh? So I was working since the so you could find my own name that was the thing. You found it, you? Yeah. Find your name? It is, yeah. Very good. <laughs> John's name is there as well. We've been there in 68, yeah, 67. We Mikey there. Callahan there, the poor. We lived there six they were lived there when we started, like we would have been started there as boys in the summer. We should have started the front of this we'd only be boys at the time. You see our name there at this stage. See so there Duggan. Larry Duggan. So you know you'd have to load a season Duggan or Frank Duggan. 
be a brother of mine. Your brother, okay. Sure, the Larry Duggan, the Dennis Duggan, Michael Duggan. Are they all your right? Richard, yeah, there'll be another Frank, Frank the first cousin. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference, the two Franks there. Who's paying who? Mm. No, we can do Yeah, I get what you're, yeah. But it's, it's like that, that was just a Dublin clan, you know so what I mean? There's two Dublin you know, this is That's why, you know what I mean? Why the, the thing would have come in. And that's what we paid for that year. See, if you're over here, sick benefit. It's B, sick benefit. You're a sick tattoo. So, that? Just, so this is January. And in the four weeks of February and four weeks of March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's every yeah, thing you pay for the per week, six shillings at a time. You know what I mean? And ten shillings. If you owed money at different times, you had mm -hmm. to pay up. You know what I mean? You had to pay up for the weeks of this. So yeah. You might be paying seven shillings or eight shillings yeah. a week to pay up your arrears. You'd pay seven. You know, if, but the, the normal contribution would be the. So what's this one then? What's this say? Sick bin, sick bin for this is SB, sick, sick. You don't see. Oh, yeah. SB, I get it now, S, sick bin. SB, you want to receive a sick bin. Very good. And, then there's and right? this one has people that have passed away. There be most people that were constantly on sick and constantly on retirement. Those who are retired, these are pensions, you know what I mean? These are all gone. All the pensions come in. And they're there. Oh my god. No, he's the only one in that book. Well, it'll be a few of these. These are reunion people. That's Brown from Dublin. Eddie Brown from Dublin, yeah. He yeah. was president of the union at the time. He was the mayor here in the memory. Yeah, let me see that. Yeah, we'll tell you, John. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Tommy Allen. See, they're, they're the pensions that were paid. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the, the week. Yeah. And they're, they're the sick benefits that were paid out for that week. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there will be the, the different sick benefits. That's a great little book, isn't it? So that's the time, you know what I mean? So th that's just a, a brought down to visit. We were paying, we were one of the only organisations that were actually paying a sick benefit and, and a pension, you know what I mean? Did anyone tell you the story of the, the lockout, the Dublin lockout? Um, one man touched yeah. on it. That's what we were working on, Larry and myself. We were trying to get a plaque and commemorative with commemor the yeah. butchers contributions to the Dublin Lockout. At the time, poor butchers gave money to Larkin. Yeah. They were striking Dublin, all they were all locked out, no money, they couldn't pay money, unions couldn't pay money or anything else. And we were members of the union, I'm not too sure if we were members of the union at the time, but the union was looking for money off of any of the factories or members around the report to give them money support the, the Dublin strike. So we, we, we put a levy. I think it's in the book I have. We put a levy on all the members. I don't know how much it was. It was, it was pretty heavy, as I can recall. I think it was but something like six or seven pence per head, because that was, that was in the 70s, so it would have been a lot. You know, Back been, in the flipping. It would have been a shilling a head. You know, in the 70s, the 13, 13 lock 1913. 1913. It would have been a lot. Look at the money. If you a shilling, it would have been a lot of money. Oh, it was a lot of money at the time, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't have far to go back to see what we paid, but we but don't but have that particular yeah, book. But by, right. all, by all accounts, we. Um, per capita, we gave more money to the Dublin Lockout than any other. Society or anyone yeah. in the in the country. Larkin gave us great praise at the time at the, at the trades meetings in Dublin, but we never got credit. Really. No. There were celebrations on the union had celebrations on there. Was it last year? Yeah, that's right. The, the lockout was two years back. Yeah. So we we were down to the officers of the union. We got no, them. we got no um, recognition. Recognition. That's why we were looking for this plaque to put up to get something out of it. Okay. So we were up in the retirement <coughs> meeting and, and the chap at the Max, you probably met him, he'd be with Joe Hayes. He's no, looking to put a statue. Yes. He wants to put a statue yeah, we, of Woman we Williams. Is that Eddie Mac? Yeah. What's his first Mac name? Eddie Mac. Eddie Mac. Eddie Mac with Joe. Well, see, before we, we started the ball going here, it was seven John were on the retire committee and we went to the Dublin to get the plaque. And we, I, I was familiar with the two officers because I was on the executive forward at the mm. uh, union executive. Now he had an in. So I had an in to get him, so <laughs> I got him to them and they said they do a plan. We said we were on to the mayor at the time, she and you know, those yeah. two mayors last year before, so and we got so involved afterwards. So we started a ball going with the mayor, but the year grew now. Yeah. We because we, we were on the senior citizens forum here in Limerick. Right. And we went to the mayor through that senior mm. citizens forum and we said, Could he do anything for to remember the four factories, you know? Yeah. So he said he would. And he continues, look, as soon as I get time, I'll do this. And so eventually he got he, you know, it was invested. And we got him to the other mayor. And, said, and then he had more interest in it because he had an association with connection because of the. No, 
the uh, mayor. Michael Sheehan. Michael, Michael Sheehan, yeah. yeah. But the other mayor had more, had more of a connection. Kevin, had he? The, the, the OD. Not OD, but the Jerry ODs. Oh, Jerry OD, yeah, Jerry OD. The He's the president mayor. He's the president mayor. Yeah. He had more because he was tied in with, 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 with ODs. Oh, but, yeah. but that was our local. Yeah. That was he. That we, he we all went in there every. Uh, Did I tell you that? Every, every you know, ladies' day, we always went to ODs. We all celebrated any celebration where we had them in the ODs. You know what I mean? And so the ODs were just like the pub. The pub to go because they're next to a club meet. And a lot of fellas, they said, spend more time in there than they spend at the job. But that's oh what I was just going to say. <laughs> Did I tell you I met Jerry O.D.? Yeah. Below in Kilkey. I went in for a meal and uh, well, I don't know the name of the place was in Kilkey. And who comes in but the mayor here and his uncle Jerry. Yeah. And Jerry came over and shook hands with me. No oh, tea and he said, how are you? Yeah. Young says I said. <laughs> and uh, he remembered me. Very and did, I was only going there with the father but it was a young dad. Oh, he, well, he remembered me, I don't know. Yeah. So he looked good. well. It was lovely to see him. So yeah. I was saying to him, we might get in touch you one of the days, you'll never know, I said, yeah. this plaque business. Yeah, but the mayor was very helpful for us, like, yeah. he helped, he helped to get you started, you know what I mean? That's, that's where he started, like, you know what I mean? So we got the plaque, and Joe Hilton, and then, and then it is continued on. We yeah. didn't give it up, we're still involved with him, you know what I mean? But um, as I was the last chairman of the Corporate Society, as he worked on, John was the last tre treasurer secretary. So. He, he's the main man, he's the man with all the money, so we have to keep yeah, in touch with John. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just come back there. What was social life like? Social life was good at the time, because at that time everyone seemed to we were drinking more because you went in for a pint after work before you went home at time. Your social life seemed to be better. Maybe because we, it was the atmosphere. Yeah. Everyone drank more or went out more. We knew one another. We knew, and there was less hassle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Social life seemed to be better. Then we were lucky. We were the ones who were in a good constant job and we were one of the better paid jobs in Limerick and we had by the 60s and 70s we had a bonus scheme going. Yeah. Now we were looking at Mara's because we didn't have as much trouble as they had in Clover Meats. We had a group bonus scheme so I was the fighting with John to get more money, you know, to him. Okay, what's, sir, what's the bonus scheme? The bonus said if we kill so many pigs, so many hours, and if we cut up so many, so many hours, and if we done, uh, like a production line, yeah. but if we improved on the and the, the production, we got a bonus. You know, if okay. we got everything on time, yeah. we got a bonus. And if we got the yield, if, you know, the waste products uh, was the yield, it's, it's, uh, we get, if we got the yield, if we said, if from, he said the mark was 80, we did, the average was 80. If we got it at one point, we would all get an extra money in our pocket. The more we got the yield up, the more, Very no, good. like when I was telling you a while ago mm -hmm. about, trimming, about trimming the ribs. Mm -hmm. If you left less meat, you know, if you got less, less, less meat on the rim and more on the side, mm -hmm. then you bring up the yield, the quality, the quality yield and the quality of the bacon. That would bring you more bonus. So you've got a better, done a better job, yeah, and done it faster. You got paid more. And when you say you got paid more, was it like a couple of shillings? Oh, yeah, it was, 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 a big thing, a big, big incentive to everyone to get, and then because we had a groove scheme, everyone kind of had to pull together, yeah. you know what I mean? So if you were in the kid in line, yeah, yeah, but you were, you were working in a gang, a yeah. gang, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't an individual. Yeah. In the group. And was this every You had factory? to put your weight. Yeah, no. all the factories no. had them, but they all had different seeds. Clover Weeds had a, 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 a different, different one. one. They had an individual schemes, and it was very complicated and very. Uh, it was, I was up there now a few times because I've uh, been involved with the unit. More disputes in Clover Meats over the bonus scheme than they, 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 anything. Because everyone was fighting. There was one particular fight over it got very, very sour. But one of the O'Briens again. Yeah. He was doing a relief job for, uh, you know these cut freshers? Yeah. There was a machine with cut freshers. You know, about this job? He was, he was asked to go in the relief, and the normal thing was to go in, and you put the rashers onto a machine, you slice the rashers, and the more you done, the more you got. So he was there, and he was only doing a relief work now for, but he came up with this idea. If I put two, <coughs> two, two sides of the <coughs> yeah. of one another, then I cut four, twice the amount <laughs> in less time. Right. So he done this. It was fantastic. He was getting his bones up, 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 way up. He was laughing the whole bit of the bank. But then the fellow was out sick. <coughs> he went to the <coughs> come back. Yeah. And he said, oh, no, no, I'm after doing this now. Why won't I? Can't. I'm not. He, he, he locked himself into the place and wouldn't let anyone in. <laughs> he, 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 
me but just hold the place with locked the cars couldn't get away. I want my I I want that to my job. <coughs> It's just making making some. He was told he'd get the sacked if he didn't, you know, stop this protest. Yeah. Know what I mean? It got very slow, very diff- very difficult. You know what I mean? Okay. But he thought he was after win the string. He'd be titled title to stay, but the the union rules stayed. Like if John now was there, for instance, he's in the soft mm-hmm. and John goes sick for six months. You know, it's not his fault. When John comes back, he's entitled to get his job back in the yeah. soft house. Yeah. That was the norm, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and I, if I went in and done, jobs that, and done a better job than John, the men would go, oh yeah, I want to get you came. The can't can't the can't can't over, over a space of time, they might be able to shift me over and put Larry in her. If they wanted to, you yeah, know. Yeah. But it has to be done with his agreement, though. Yeah, it has to be negotiated. You know what I mean? They'd have to kind of negotiate. Did but you men get his job back in the end? They saved it. it was, we got, yeah, I think he got suspended for a long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the usual way of like, we'd suspend him like, and give him a couple of bob, you know? And, uh, but it, like, though, it was bitter rows over arguments. Fellas, like, I, because they got used to handy work and they were to make good work on certain, on certain jobs. And they all wanted a certain job yeah. then, you know? Some jobs you wouldn't. It happened to us. It happened to us. When they brought in the bonus scheme with over us, the first job they were doing was down clear, what we call making down yeah. clear. That was taking the rib and the hawk out of the side of the bake that I was yeah. telling you about. And there was a gang used to do that. There'd be two bony, what we call bony, taking out the rib and the down clear. There'd be one feeding the table, yeah. and there'd be one taking away the, the, the apples off the pea and taking away the bacon. And we'd say we used to do six. No, don't be six. We used to do sixteen hours. Your man comes down with his stopwatch, times, says, Right, you, you do eighteen hours, you can do eighteen hours. You know. I've timed you, you can do eighteen hours. Know. You could. Don't be taking such long breaks, and don't be doing this, and don't be mm-hmm. doing that. So he set it at eighty, you know. Which meant we had to do more than eighty. Yeah. To get the to get your bonus. To get the bonus. Yeah. So it's impossible. We told him even when he said it is, it's impossible, we can't make a penny. We knew what we could do. We knew what we should have been doing. Uh, he wouldn't agree with us. So it was set at eight and we never made a penny out of it. All right, you smart daddy, we'll catch you the next time. Mm. So the next job we went on to for striking tanks, taking the bacon out of the tanks. Yeah. Which is corporate about five or six men gang. Yeah. He came in with his stopwatch. Yeah. By, you know. Slowly, yeah. <laughs> so he said he would say uh, 30 an hour. Mm. And we were able to do 60 an hour. That's brilliant, yeah. <laughs> so, things like that. You got it back anyway. But you had a gang then. And if Larry wasn't putting his weight, the others would get on to The foreman didn't have to do it. The boys themselves in the gang. Yeah. Hey, Larry, you're off your ass now. We're on a bonus. So it's the same thing as when they were cutting eggs. Yeah, we used to, we would have to cut an egg, and like John said, we would have to do 180 you now, say, for the Harry was sick. And uh, I, I was on the machine down, and uh, you can only really put one through, through the machine, but if you fold them over the ham a certain way, it gets extra one in, and then uh, it meant we could all finish an hour earlier, like, yeah. because you, you were done. You, you only had to do. You went to do your certain amount. You need to do 14 out, it's 14 in the cut. 14, but, yeah. but if you done double that, you could do nothing for the other one, or do another job and get more bonus. Right. If you wanted to. Yeah. Another, the most of the lads would have to finish early, then do another one. Then work. you would start something else. So that's, we were all Guinness. Once we found a way to get around, like the, 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 the biggest benefit was the one John was telling about striking the bacon. Yeah. When the lads at the time, we meant it was like, we would take our time to go on. But then they found a new way. Look, besides, uh, we used to take it open. We used to take it on cat- wheelbarrows, right? right. But when your man, when your man was gone, we had these steel tables. Do away with the wheelbarrows. They flew along the table. We fell out the two in, two come out from pile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a line. They just put it on the table. <laughs> so instead of, <laughs> instead, of having, instead, instead of having two fellows with hand carts, feeding yeah. the four man gang piling, yeah. you know. The two taking out the tank, you do away with the two men on the hand carts, they were able to win the law piling. So the boys could throw them onto the bench, they'd slide on the bench, and there was three oh, okay, pairs of people right. piling them, so we don't know. Very good. Oh, there was ways they around everything, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought that. Yeah, is that okay? I'll just stop that. No, I'm sorry now, but that's what I said to you.